All right, Colts fans, we are back with another edition of Into the DB Film Room. Uh, I'm your host, Zach Hicks, joined by my buddy, Jonathan Hagler. Uh, we are here to talk about this latest game against the Rams. And unfortunately, it's not going to be another, it's, it's going to be like another one like week one, where it's more of kind of the bad than the good. Uh, the Colts were kind of shredded yet again, uh, even with Matthew Stafford, Matthew Stafford having a bit of an off day. Uh, the Colts kind of struggled in this one again uh, in the secondary. But have you had a chance to rewatch the game at all, or have you just seen the clips that I've shown you? So I, I watched some of it. Um, I was definitely checking in because uh, Stafford's my starting quarterback in fantasy. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I like to, I like to peep in. I'll switch the game Sunday, watch a couple of my guys, and, you know, I peep in, and the game got out of hand. I kind of shut it off. But, uh, yeah, no, I, 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 saw, I saw a lot of the bad, you know, but – yeah, and, you know, it, it, it's tough. Like we were saying last week, uh, you know, going against Waldron and the Seahawks, it's you, you get this really tough, motion-heavy offense with, with pretty good receivers and Lockett and Metcalf. And then the next week you get McVay, who's the one who taught Waldron, uh, along with Robert Woods and Cooper Cup, who are two. And you talked about it. <laughs> other you good talked ones, about man. it. That's, that's what, you know, we were, we were talking about how um, how far did the apple fall, you know. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think some of the concepts, I think on one of the places we were just talking about, you know, I think they definitely saw something there uh, with however the Colts play or whatever they like to call. There's a couple in there that they definitely called their shot on and they hit. Um, so maybe the Colts are a little bit too predictable um, with what they do. And I think they're making it a little bit too easy for these elite guys. When you talk about, you know, the Cups, the Woods, the Staffords, the Metcalfs and Lockets, that's not a fun fun uh, lineup to go against in any, any time. There's no breaks in the NFL, but those guys make you pay. Yeah, and luckily the Colts have a very easy matchup this week. You know, they just have to cover A.J. Brown, Ju- uh, Julio Jones, <laughs> <laughs> Ryan yeah, Tannehill, you know, <laughs> you know, not, not, nothing too bad this week. Is, but, is it 200 uh, or 300 by, by Henry? That's the Because <laughs> he's a yeah. problem. Uh, dude, honestly, the Colts the last two years have had under four yards to carry uh, to running backs allowed uh, mm-hmm. overall in the season. But Derrick Henry is always over about five yards to carry against them. So it's Man, just – Henry. He always gets his yards, man. He always gets his yards. But we'll talk a little bit about the, the Titans here at the end of the show. We're going to jump into some film now. Let me get the, the clips pulled up. And we're going to just watch this masterpiece that was the Colts defense against the Rams. Let's <laughs> okay. see. All right. So I know a lot of people were complaining on Sunday about TJ Carey. He actually did get pulled for a little bit in this game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think it was anything like a benching. But I, I, do, I did remember seeing his snaps kind of come down a little bit as the game went on. Uh, but he had a he had a tough matchup. You know, he's going against Robert Woods down here. He's in man coverage, and Robert Woods basically runs the teach tape for wide receivers on how to set up a guy outside and winning back inside. So what you kind of can see on this play is Robert Woods is trying to get. I think it's like a deep in or like a crossing route, and you know he's got this kind of press man by TJ Carey who's not really getting contact, so it's a little bit off man as well. Uh, but Woods kind of sets him up outside, gets him to open up to the outside hash or to the outside the sideline, and then just wins back over the middle uh, with ease. Uh, when you're watching this play, what would you kind of say to a corner in this situation, especially when you're going against a technician like Robert Woods? It, the technicians, man, you have to slow down. You know, mm-hmm. I think, you know, you hear DB coaches say it all the time, be patient, be patient. You know, don't fall for the first move. I think especially with guys who aren't extremely fast, never fall for the first move. If it becomes a foot race, it becomes a foot race. But, you know, guys like Robert Woods who are super crafty and they're known as route salesmen, you have to mm-hmm. wait because that first one is probably a whole bunch of BS and he's going to set you up just like you did with this jab step right here to the outside, got you rolling, and now it's over. Now, you you know, you're yep. panicking and, you know, real Woods did his job. Yep, and then when you get to this situation right here where you're stepping over your outside foot and you're looking towards the sideline, mm-hmm. the route's over. You're, you, yeah. you can't recover. Yep. from there um it's actually a, a fairly decent speed turn here by Kevin yeah yeah I, I was like just, I just noticed that. I, that, that that was a nice speed turn you know pretty textbook speed turn I actually closed a decent amount of ground because yeah if, if he would have tried to open back up you know who knows what would have happened honestly if if woods isn't just quicker on this on this jab to get across the middle carry probably recovers because right right here he's pretty even it's just woods is just so quick yeah. on that you can't be a step behind him uh, because he's gonna, yeah, yeah. he's gonna, gonna he's gonna burn you. Yep, yep. So yeah, this this here. You, I mean, I, this kind of does lead to something here. I I hate off man coverage. I just hate mm-hmm. it. Uh-huh. <laughs> I hate it so much. Uh, so yeah. I hate stuff like this. You know, where you're giving a guy like Robert Woods space, and you're not really 
adjusting the rod at all. You know, you're, you're mirroring him a little bit, but mm-hmm. you're not doing anything to, to push him off his path, to throw off his chemistry with the receiver. How do you feel kind of about off man or, or even this kind of, I, I, I don't know, this is kind of like press a little bit because he's fairly close, but how do you feel about this kind of coverage uh, when it comes to man defense? So, so there's, there's always like been two, you know, one or two rules of thumb, I think in, in coverage, either you're pressing or you're, you know, five, six, seven, give or take whatever your DB coach is. Anything, you know, I think after that initial yard and a half, two yards is what we call no man's land. Um, and that's where it gets, it gets murky. You know, you're, mm-hmm. you're in a weird spot to where you can't, you don't really have great vision to see your help. And then you're probably too far off, um, to a point to where you're creating natural separation by the receiver. Um, and that's not something you want with, with guys like Robert Woods. I'm a press guy, but also, uh, you know, I like, you know, I like my bracket coverages. I like my, mm-hmm. my man off man coverages where I know where my low hole player is. This is a tough one because it, it doesn't seem like he has, you know, help. Um, and I think he's kind of a bit in no man's land, you know? He, yeah. It's, it's kind of weird. He's in a tough spot and that's not where you want to be with uh, a guy like Robert Woods. But, yeah, that's that's how I feel about off, man. Not, I'm not – I don't dislike it. Uh, obviously, I prefer press. Uh, just mm-hmm. to, You know, that's my my personality. But, um, you know, yeah, he's in, a, he's in a weird spot right here. He's a little too deep, I would I would say. Um, so. Yeah, he's got the single high help over the middle. But, the I mean, the seam – the vertical seam right here is – it takes your help kind of away. So, mm-hmm. You don't want to be a no man's land when you have a chance. You know, when you have a, just a single high help in man coverage, you know, you can't count on that help, you know, oh, yeah, being he, over he, your route, you know. And he's got help help underneath uh, technically, but, you know, the, the tight end draws out the mic, um, mm-hmm. draws him out, Woods p- passes right in, you know, great great job by the receiver um, and great job by, by, like, by Woods creating separation. Yeah. Yeah, and then we got another one, pretty much a similar route, except uh, this is more on the slot. Uh, this is Isaiah Rogers. This is going to be no, it's a single eye again. So yeah, just similar, mm-hmm. similar concept all around. Uh, but this is kind of the example, you know, looking at a veteran guy like TJ Carey, where Carey gets beat, but he's able to speed turn and at least make it a lot closer than what it is. Yeah. Uh, when you got a younger guy like Isaiah Rogers, who I think you know, you and I were talking beforehand. I, I, I this has to be like under twenty defensive snaps for him in his career. Uh, you, you kind of get outclassed a little bit by a guy like Robert Woods, and you got this off man, you're retreating, and then, you know, again, you and I were talking about this. He's sitting on the inside route. It's mm-hmm. just when Woods sells that outside with the jab, it, it just completely throws off Rodgers. He's, he stumbles. Uh, luckily, he didn't fall down. He's able to get back, you know, kind of reestablish he's himself. Fast. Like, he's so fast and quick because that could have yeah. been a lot worse. If you, if you watch him transition – I think he's kind of all over the place. I think he's messing with, you know, the quarterback sees it. You know, you got a safety in the middle of the field. I think initially he was showing that he was outside. Uh, he moves inside. I think he's probably doing a little too much. Uh, mm-hmm. Clock got sped up. Um, Cup did a good job of, you know, uh, not Cup. Uh, Woods did a good job with that jab step again. Uh, created separation, got him turning. And like you said, he sat on it, and it's like he didn't trust it because he's sitting inside now. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if that if he was looking at if his eyes got too high or something, but he's completely broken down right here. Yeah, um, you know the fact that he's able to recover. Like I, I know it's a bad throw, so it kind of helps. But the fact that he's even able to be somewhat close to the receiver when he's in this position right here—that's yeah, well, that, crazy. <laughs> like that, that, that's crazy. But in in he's such a fast guy that you know he didn't get completely embarrassed. But I I think he lost his rep, you know, right here. Yep. You know he turned. You know, you're a fast guy. I don't know why you're panicking. You know, Woods isn't going to run by him. Um, mm-hmm. You know, maybe he's he's thinking of an out or something, but he should have just trusted his instincts right there. He knew what was about to happen, and, you know, Woods is crafty, and that's what that's what those good receivers do. Yeah, and it's kind of like what you and I were talking about last week is if you're going to get beat anywhere, get beat to the outside, you know, uh, yeah. especially when it's, that's, you know, they're – they got three guys up here. He's already on the inside part of the numbers here. Like there's not as much room to work out there. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to get beat anywhere, you know, give yourself the ability to close out there. And he does a good job. Again, he's, he's opening up, but he's not, he's not like TJ Carey where he's stepping over himself, uh, committing yeah. to that outside route. You know, he's, he's kind of forcing the outside action. Uh, he mm-hmm. just gets yeah get a little overzealous with it and, and gets broken down there at the top of the route. Yeah. Now you hate to see it though. Cause yeah, a lot of times, just because you're you're fast and quick doesn't mean you know what I'm saying your your technique is always flawless. 
Uh, I wish he would have trusted himself right here because he probably makes the you know probably stonewalls this route if he just mm -hmm. sits on it like he like he initially thought because he's baiting it right now. He, yeah. he's, he's outside, boom, hop inside, you're good with money, and then you know that like I said, those, those good ones that make you do you know things that that you don't want to do. So. Yeah, that's a good catch. I didn't even realize that he is playing outside, and then as the route starts, he does shuffle inside a little bit. Yeah, that's a good catch. I didn't see that at first. Yeah, and no, I mean, it's it's. It, I mean, it was definitely something like I like to do because you know the quarterback's looking. You know, mm -hmm. but you know a lot of times whether they're looking at the safeties or they're looking at a slot defender, you know, they'll tell you a lot about how they're playing, whether they're outside, uh, they're playing man outside or inside or whatever it may be, and um, you know, you're just trying to bait that quarterback into that throw. And you know, I think he tried to, or he wanted to initially. He just couldn't execute it. Yep, right mindset. Just lost the confidence a little bit there at the top of the route. Hey, hey, they'll do it to you, man. Those routes. Yeah. He's a route runner. <laughs> yep. So what do you think about this depth right here off the line of scrimmage and everything? How compared to the last one? Oh, he's fine. I think what he's about six right here. Mm -hmm. uh, that's about how you want it. Uh, you know, the two and three receiver they're pretty tight, so uh, you want them on different levels. Um, so you're not you're not probably going to get rubbed right here. Yep. Um, so I think it's fine uh, when you when you talk about depth right there. I think he's good and off right there. Uh, that's where you want him at. He still can run vertically, uh, still can break on those medium crossers and whatever. He just like I said, that was him. That was that yep. wasn't that wasn't a play call. That was it. That was all. That was all Rogers. Yeah, definitely gotta trust his. You gotta trust. I mean, a guy like him, you gotta trust your athleticism going oh, forward. Yeah. That's the that's really the biggest thing. I mean, that he's I, I think he's five ten, maybe like a buck seventy five is how much yeah. he weighs, maybe at one eighty at best. He's uh, for the slot. Yeah, exactly. You're you're not gonna be this overpowering physical corner. You have to rely on your physical gifts. I mean, he's I think he ran four two eight at his pro day. You know, like crazy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know he's uh he's cousins with uh, Dominique Rogers Camardi. Oh, okay. So, so I do. Um, I remember seeing something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what did uh, what did DRC run? Uh, four two four or something yeah, like that yeah, too. Yeah. Like crazy. What was he at, a, at a Tennessee State. <laughs> yeah, dude. He, yeah. he was yeah. a freak. He was in his thirties, still looking like he was running like four. Oh, I, hey, I remember. Hey, trust me, I remember. <laughs> I know. Oh man, yeah, just really fast family there, and yeah, I think if Rogers learns to trust that speed and trust his own instincts. Cause again, pre-snap, everything's good. It's just post-snap, you know, get kind of hone all that in there. Okay. Um, this next clip here, we are going to what I like to call the run stop of the week for a defensive back. We did it last week with Kenny Moore. Uh, just an excellent play from Kenny. Oh, yeah. uh, we got this one here from Rockison, and it's actually not a traditional run. It's not like a run up the middle or anything like that. We got Rockison here on the reverse. Uh, he notices his guy in man coverage is coming back across the formation. And that's, that's tough right there. Uh, Knowing that you have to fight yeah. through all the traffic to get to your guy, uh, but he does a great job here. He's able to flow through the play. Quiddy Pay gives him a little assist by forcing the run outside, and he tracks it down uh, across the field for the tackle. Just, uh, hey, I, the, I love the this play. fastest way. The fastest way to a spy is in a straight line. And mm -hmm. if you look at him, he beams straight across. Yep, and he he meets him at the line of scrimmage. That's that's great. I love that just because you know just to have the awareness, just to have the effort. A lot of guys give up. Um, you know, I always talk about urgency with DBs. Um, you know, I think defense players in general, but he has a ton of urgency here. He knows his guy is, is is going out there. If he doesn't make it, who knows? You know, maybe he gets the edge on Quiddy. You know, he's a, he's a great athlete, but you know, great, great, great play by by Rock. Yeah, and you know, it's hard to see just kind of when you're watching film like this. But this is you know, thirty yards he's spanning, maybe twenty oh, yeah, thirty yards. Right. Like, yeah, he covered three fourths of the field right there. Yeah, like, yeah, on the line. Quick too. I mean, yeah. and he's not known for his speed. He's more of that physical type of corner. Uh, just yeah, gets that's down one of the there fast. Things. I wish we had. Um, I wish we had the next gen right there because I mean, he, yeah. he bolted. He bolted across right there. Like I'm a big fan of acceleration numbers. Then I bet. Mm -hmm. Hey, he got on his horse there. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Love it. Run. That's our run stop of the week right there. We're gonna try to do that every single week and uh, oh, maybe not this next week with Derrick Henry coming into the town. We'll see, we'll see if we get one. Who doesn't get step on? That's the question. That's <laughs> pretty, pretty much, pretty much. So this one uh, is, is the one where Kenny Moore gets beat over the middle by Cooper Cup. And I'll run the clip real quick as I'm talking. Uh, but you and I were kind of talking beforehand. It's about that that depth when you have guys uh, side by side like this in man coverage. And you were talking about that with the Isaiah Rogers. Here, I can even go back to that for a second. Um, let me get that up here. So you can notice how these guys are on different levels 
uh, on on defense and in, in man coverage. And I call that more banjo coverage. What what do you say you call it? Wheel was that was that what you that, said? That's a call we we tell our young guys. You know, wheel banjo is you know pretty universal. You know, uh, uh, but you know we just it's just telling them guys. You know, hey, watch the rub if mm-hmm. they are switch whatever whatever they may be in. I know they're a man right here, um, but you know just the the depth. You cannot be on the same level. You know, yep. I don't care what anybody says. You have to to know the splits of the receivers, know if they're tight, know if they're bunched. And if they are, you can't be on the same level or to a point where you would get in the way of another defender if you get a crosser in. You know, the safety. And who do we have in the slot right here? So this is Kari Willis in the slot over the linebacker. We got Kenny Moore here okay, against yeah. Cooper Cup. So it's not that Kenny and the number one receiver down here at the bottom um, – are, are too tight or a cup in the in woods down here at the bottom, whoever it is. Um, it's the corner and the safety. You mm-hmm. know, naturally, if I just tell you to play right now and I say, hey, this slot guy is going to run across the field, what's the biggest issue that we could run into? And then somebody's going to say each other because, <laughs> you know, they're, they're, if he runs a slant or if he takes him anywhere across, he's going to bump right into him. And you can see it right here in game. I think, you know, at times you, you get a little lax or – you know, you're just trying to get lined up and it kind of you know, goes past your head. But you have to declare it now. Mm-hmm. Somebody has to declare something now, whether that be Kenny Moore playing off or in that safety, you know, coming up a little bit more. But you can't you can't be that close to each other on the same level. Yeah. The only way I can see this is maybe working is if you're going to pass off this man as he comes mm-hmm. across, maybe. But and, and that and, and that'd be that put you in a bad spot. Yeah. Tight end run, you know, if he doesn't come to you. Um, yeah, because then say say this guy is running like a drag or something. Yeah. Then now you have this guy carrying, and then you have this guy who has to make a B line right there. So yeah, it's yeah. this this depth is not good for mm-hmm. especially what's about to be run, especially against a receiver like Cooper Cup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, now yeah, he, he's in a tough spot. You know whether Kenny scoots up more or you know, yeah, that's that he's beat he's beat as soon as the play starts. So, yep. You know, like like I said earlier when we were talking about it, it was like Cup ran the route on the line on the safety. He ran. He he. Jab, he gave the the safety a jab step, created a ton of separation, even more separation from the natural pick that was occurring. And yeah, you're not gonna get him right there. Cup's not a burner, but he he can run a little bit. So yeah, yep. that's nobody's getting, nobody's covering that. When you give a guy like Cooper Cup, who's you know when he if he were a full time slot, he'd be the best slot receiver in football. He kind of does oh, it all yeah. though for the Rams. Uh, when you give him this right here, where this is your man trying to cover, that that's the route. That's that's the rep. It, it's well, look over. At, look at all of the grass right there Mm -hmm. it's all field like it it can be you know the practice squad guy you don't want him running to green grass anywhere and that's that's a problem you know that's that's something you you run into when you're running you know uh, one single high or cover one whatever you want to call it um you know you got to stay on that you have to cover that and you have to have a a ton of urgency because you don't want cooper cup running across the middle of your field yeah, and the only way I really think that this could be salvaged is if I mean I'm not even saying this is on Julian Blackman like this is because mm-hmm. he has to you know he's the single eye he has to read everything oh, yeah. is if he knew this right away and he's already breaking that's really the only way that this is salvageable and he you know he gets a decent jump on it it's just mm-hmm. you know the second Cooper Cup gets that that separation right there it's over and then especially oh, yeah. when he gets to his spot right there uh, because guys like him and Robert Woods they're such great technicians. That uh, like you know, I was kind of saying that they're they're speed outs. They're they're just they're kind of quick ones that are usually those routes are even more rounded off. They they look like actual routes that these guys are breaking down and and getting you know oh, on yeah. a line. These guys can just take one step and get down a line easy because they're yeah, just the, like top even, yeah, he, he created two three yards of separation um off his break off the second break. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's that's that's tough. It, like I, I say it a lot, but they're going to get some of the best route runners in the NFL. When you talk about Lockett, Cooper Cove, and Robert Woods, those guys, they're going to create separation anyway. Yeah, um, so. Yeah, and I and I will give Eberflus some credit uh, when it comes – I didn't mean to say it like that. That sounds very passive-aggressive. I wasn't trying to say, like, some credit. But, um, you know, we, we were talking a lot last week how the Colts are running a lot of cover two, cover three, mm-hmm. and the Seahawks, what they essentially were doing was attacking the flats, attack the flats, attack the flats. Okay, now let's hit the deep bomb. Yeah. Uh, he did a lot of cover one in this game and mm-hmm. cover one single high. And at the end of the day, with especially with Xavier Oates out, they just didn't have the guys who could match up with these receivers. Uh, and the blitzes just weren't getting home when they were bringing, because this was, this you know, this is pressure up front. You got what, six guys coming. Uh, yeah. And they're just not able out. to get home in time. 
Well, great yeah. job by the running back. Who was that, Henderson? Yeah, dude, Henderson on Darius Leonard there. Just an yeah. excellent, good excellent. Job. Good job in pass pro right there. I think it happened last week. Um, the running back did a great job, bought his quarterback that extra second, whatever it was, for him to deliver a shot. So I don't know if it's bad luck or guys just being pros, but – you know these guys they're getting they're going to get some good players right now and and they're doing their jobs and they're buying the quarterbacks a lot of time yeah i do want to look at the other corners here actually now i didn't even really recognize them before because i was really just focusing here but rocketing's a little bit of contact down here and staying on the route pretty mm -hmm. good and then yeah, I rogers good. actually is probably better with his press here i like his little one hand and still kind of staying square good offhand jam he's still yeah, on top of him knocks a receiver off the route um, yeah, like that. That's really nice up there. Yeah, he's winning that rep all day, right there. Yeah, rocks a little. Again, just a little off balance when he's throwing the contact. Mm -hmm. But you know, he still is able to to adjust the route and stay on it. So I mean, I, I think it's it's really just an alignment issue here. <laughs> that's what it comes yeah, down yeah, to. Yeah. And, and that's you know that's where they're gonna hit. But you know when you when you line up in the, in this, you expect to get home. Mm -hmm. um, you don't expect them to have a ton of time. You're you're probably expecting them to have an air and throw uh, under pressure or, or something. But, you know, that's what happens when you send six or send, you know, more guys. Like, you have to get there. Yep. Yep. I think we have – no, two more clips, two more clips. Uh, so this one we got uh, basic cover two, uh, which you guys all love, love cover two. We get it all the time. <laughs> no, just kidding. You guys hate it. Uh, but this is just great recognition by Julian Black. And we saw a ton of this last year, uh, especially – it was like – Anytime that skinny post or like a deep slant or something like that was thrown against the Colts, especially on third downs, Blackman was flying down from that too high spot. Uh, and he does a great job here where it's third and long. This is where the sticks are right here. So we got the safeties playing the sticks. You got the cover two shell that's going to be right around here. Mm -hmm. And Blackman's kind of sitting on the sticks here. And as Stafford starts getting out of the pocket, that's when he's starting to break on this route. Uh, and just does a great job getting hat on ball and knocking that ball out. Um, what what did you like about this rep here from Julian Blackman? His two high safety spot. I like, I like. First of all, they're deep, so clearly you know they're they they know it has to come deep. Mm -hmm. I really like this rep by the corner. Um, he's sinking, so I think Julian knows that the corner route. Um, you know they're gonna have to make a crazy throw, so he knows mm -hmm. he, he he can sit there and drive to, you know whether it be the dig or a crosser or a post because the corner's doing a really good job of sinking right there. He gets great depth, if you notice, on his drop. So it allows the safety to relax a little bit. So now he can drive to that. Um, you know, yeah, I think that the whole play was good. You know, um, you know, it opens up cover two. It's going to be a lot of holes there. The, the quarterback see it. But, you know, when everybody does their job, you know, the backers get great depth here. Um, you know, you know, life, life is good. You know, great instincts, great uh, breakup, great footwork by Blackman here. Um, to explode to the to the receiver, he transitions really well out of that back pedal. Just very explosive player. Just oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. I like it. Yeah, that's that, that's that's what you want. You know, you don't want big third down conversions anyway. But uh, mm -hmm. you know, cover two. It's not my favorite coverage, but <laughs> when um, you know, when you know, at times when it's run correctly, you know, it it definitely has a place in football. But it's just so hard to run against elite quarterbacks because they'll find them windows. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I would say that Eberflus has gotten a lot better at that over the years. I think early on it was a lot of cover two against everyone, and then he kind of had to slowly realize while getting burned by some elite quarterbacks. Like, you know, yeah, if you were sitting cover two all day against Russell Wilson, Matthew Stafford. Oh, they're uh, going to have a field day. Yeah, they're going to have a field day. Unless, you know, I, I think I had a – what was his name? He coached uh, at, at the Iron when we had that little thing. Um, he was in Buff Buffalo and – I want to say he was with Tampa um, when they okay. were in the Tampa two stuff. And uh, he would talk about how much he's like, you cannot run this coverage. He was like, you cannot run Tampa two um, If you do not have Warren Sapp and Derrick Brooks. Yeah. And he was like, if you don't have an interior D lineman that can generate a uh, pass rush, like Warren Sapp or some, something similar or a linebacker that's going to book it to that hook curl. Um, he's like, you're, you're, you're in trouble. Yeah, he's like you're in trouble. He was like, and there's not a lot of Derrick Brooks and Warren Sapp running around. So. Yeah, and I mean the Colts had two All Pros too. They have DeForest Buckner and Darius Leonard, but it's just yeah. not. It's still not the same, you know. <laughs> yeah, they they get they they have to get there. But um, you know, it has its place. But that's that's tough, and you know, you, you hate to see you hate to see when it when it when it shows that simple. 
uh, whether it be last week or, or something like that, when, you know, those elite guys just pick it apart and teams have elite speed to take advantage of it, mm-hmm. you know, that's when it becomes, you know, a problem because everybody can see it. Yep. Yep, for sure. For sure. So now I, I do want to highlight again, you said Rocky Sin was good on this play, gets great dra- great, great depth. So that's three mm-hmm. plays in a row. We're talking good about Rocky Sin. Hey, so. hey look, the number one thing for corners right here in, in cover two is, you know, you want to make sure they get depth. You want to make sure they're sinking and the, they don't allow outside release. So he did his job. So. Yep. Yeah. So three great plays in a row for Rocky Sin. We're going to remember that going to this last one where, again, I, I think it's just something where it's very coachable this mistake. And, and I'm glad that you explained this to me before we jumped on. Cause I think this is probably gonna be the clip we talk about the most here, because mm-hmm. this is definitely something that I think I'm not saying the average football fan or anything to talk down on people, but I think this, this type of coverage is difficult to understand. It's something I even had to ask you before we jumped on um, is this is not like a typical, Oh, this is cover three. This is man coverage. Uh, mm-hmm. Kind of what we got going on here is we've got uh switch release. We've got man on man here. This is, somewhat like a little bit like banjo coverage here yeah. um but they're they're kind of just wait on that switch and they're gonna you know whoever goes inside he's taking whoever's going outside so this is just man to man up here uh but down here we got like a it's like a box zone right is what you were mm-hmm. saying before yeah that, i mean that's what we would we would go with um you know you give it a box you give a box call you know i'm not in that defensive defensive mean room so i don't like to guess yeah. but um just off of what i what i would go with um, you know, typically, you know, somebody's probably taking first out, you know, it, it looks like, you know, like you mentioned cover three, you know, cause you have a post safety right here. Everybody else mm-hmm. is in zone. You got a corner sitting up here in the third, you got a hook curl player and you got a flat defender. Um, yep. and then you got man to the backside. And then, you know, typically, you know, a lot of times I think in man, when you see bunch, you know, you'll see a guy press the point, um, uh, press the point, you know, to, uh, mess with that, that timing right there, the point guy. Um, and this and what's about to happen is some of the negatives when you do give when you, you do give a zone look or a box call or something, something along those lines, you know, uh, windows open up. Um, great play call by the Rams here. You know, the the back right here, who's the third receiver in the in the bunch runs. Well, what is that? What would he run? Uh, it's like a like a little curl. Kind of, yeah, like a little curl. Yeah. So he's going to he's going to he's going to freeze that that flat defender and he's going to suck the. The, the on ball receiver in the bunch is going to suck the middle linebacker in. It's going to create a ton of space for Cooper Cup right here, who's lined up in the outside. Rock Yasin, who's sitting right here in that third, you know, mm-hmm. he has to squeeze here because yep. now a huge window just opened up. There's not a vertical thread aside from Cooper Cup here. He's our, he's he's sitting outside and it, it's tough on him, but he has to squeeze that right about. If you go ahead and yeah, play it. Play it. Yep. He has to start squeezing now. Yeah. So, so and it's that quick. Now. And, you know, we talked about it last week with Lockett and those guys. But when you're facing elite talent in the NFL, which Cooper Cup is, I don't know if, if people want to disagree with that. If he's <laughs> on your fantasy team, I think people will, will, will love him. But uh, <laughs> you have to squeeze that right now as opposed to three yards into the end zone. Yeah. Because that's money. That's money. That's easy money for Matthew Stafford and Cooper Cup and Robert Woods. Great play call. Great execution by the receiver. And you know, Rocky Asin, I think he just has to his clock has to be a little faster. He 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 waited till he was two, three yards in the end zone to start squeezing. That's way too late. You have to make a decision now and go. Yeah, and I think it kind of just plays a little bit into one early season. Early season, you're still trying to get a feel for the, the year and stuff like that. I, I do think that more issues do pop up early in the year. Uh, but also a guy who's had kind of confidence issues throughout his career and stuff like that. Like I feel like he knows the right play to be made here, but he's just kind of sitting on it. You know, he's He's just yeah. waiting too much. It's you know? not that he's not doing his job. It's mm-hmm. it's the football play. Like, you know, it's being a football player or being a really good one. You know, the you know, if I said uh Jalen Ramsey, if I you know, I know he's on the Rams, you know, not no point, <laughs> you know, not I mean to, to say it, but say Jalen Ramsey, he's arguably the best cornerback in the league, right? Mm-hmm. Do you think Jalen Ramsey is driving right now? Oh, dude, he's already right. He's right here. <laughs> he's, yeah, right. He's already right on top of it. And, and so that that that's my thing. It's not a, a shot at, at, at Rocky Sin, but you know, I think the better better corners in the league, they probably have a little bit better feel for it. You know, mm-hmm. a couple of good receiver. Good receivers make you do things that you unchar- uncharacteristically do. You know, and I think you know whether it's Cooper Cup or Robert Woods. Rock I said, know that he's probably thinking too much. And then, you know, beat inside. He has to squeeze that a little tighter. Yeah. And I think, you know, it, it's funny rewatching it here. I've already watched this like 20 times, but 
Mm-hmm. Um, just rewatching it again, I don't, honestly think he'd even be fine not squeezing if he just kept his feet moving the whole time because he it's yeah, like he's, right. He, he, he sat down right there. Right here, he he just shuffles his feet just a little. And, and, and I don't know if we saw a Cubs route right here. Yeah, you know there wasn't really a reason for him to to sit. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't he, know. Yeah, he lost that one. That, I think that was definitely him. Uh, he could have made the play because the throw may have been a little bit behind him. But um, you know, if if his feet stay active, if he doesn't sit on it right there and, and keeps driving, because he has no help right there. There's a window. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to have a feel for that, and that's what I meant. Uh, you know, that's why I initially brought up Ramsey. You know, I think the really, really, really good good players, the players at the top of the top, they have an amazing feel and awareness for the game. And in zone coverage, I think they're making that play. Or yep. they're getting closer to that play. Cup may still come down with it, but I think they're a little bit closer than two yards, two and a half, three yards away from him. Yep, and I think this kind of falls clo- like close, not the same territory as Kenny Moore's last week against Metcalf because I think that one was a lot closer. But it's kind of just, again, that, that example of, like when he shuffles right here and just doesn't keep his, I mean, if he's continuing his drop right around here, he's going to be fine. But because of that shuffle and yeah. because he's not squeezing it, that, that, that half step, that, that, that slight inch right there that he's not taking that, that step, then it, it's over. It's the whole well, route. Well, just from a, just from a, you know, just a technique point, he draw he pushes off with his left foot right there in the end zone. Yeah. If he just puts his right foot down and drives. So if you, Boom! He pushes it. Yeah. He create. He created depth instead of driving to the man right there because he's driving to a spot. But if he drives to the man, mm-hmm. you know, initially maybe he makes that play. Well, yeah, because he plants his right foot, he can make it more kind of like a. He goes in really more of a direct right line to the to the yeah. receiver. Because right here he's planting his left foot, and, and he's, he's starting gonna, to open. He's gonna, up. Yeah, he's going to propel himself back and deeper into the end zone. Yeah, I mean, if you want to get beat, at least take that right step there and kind of drive this. Like get beat doing make trying to make the aggressive play rather than. You know, yeah. That, that well, if you, if you listen there. to, um, uh, I think Steve Sarkeesian has a clinic. Um, okay. You know, a clinic, and he's talking about teams running cover three, and he was like, you know, we're gonna kill that that uh, that shot all day, mm-hmm. all day. We're gonna complete it whenever we want to. And if you look at, you know, any, you know, whether it be Clemson or Alabama in college, they destroy seams, mm-hmm. or they have yeah. in the past they destroy seams because that it's hard to get a corner. To, to to squeeze and close that space and have your backer sit in that window without a good quarterback being able to put that in there. Yep. Yep. And Matthew Stafford is obviously that great quarterback, and it's just it, – yeah, it's just something he has to he has to feel better, he has to read better, and he has to just – he has to make this play. You know, that at the end of the day you can make excuses saying, oh, he, he thought he had safety help or, oh, he thought he had linebacker help. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's the play you have to make, and this ended up being the game-winning touchdown. So it's just yeah, something – at the end of the yep. day, all zone turns into man. Yep, you, know, it does. you have to relate. You have to relate to the nearest threat in your zone. So the second you know, cup crossing to that second level right there, that becomes his guy. Yep, yep. So. Yeah, and that's something that people don't understand because you know when it comes to zone coverage, we think of the Madden concept where our guys are always staying in that one zone, yeah. never moving from that zone. Uh, as as a guy moves across, we hand it off to the next one. We just stay in our zone. Uh, but most passes are thrown in two point five three seconds. Yeah. In the NFL. So once a guy gets to your zone, especially if you're playing, you know, deeper part of the field here, like like Rocky Sin, you have to get to that guy because that ball's coming out. Yep. Uh, especially against a guy like Matthew Stafford. So relate, I again just relate to the nearest threat. You know, yep. I think that's the simplest way to put it. relate to the nearest threat and, and be a football player. Yep. That's tough. Yep. Hopefully that's a, a just another big learning thing. But mm-hmm. um kind of like we were saying going into the year is you know, going into year three. Uh, yeah. For a guy like Rocky Sin, these learning things kind of have to turn into things that are actually changing mm-hmm. uh, going forward. So hopefully he's able to take that next step against, again, a much easier group of receivers than A.J. Brown and Julio Jones next week. Hey, it may hey, it may be more his style. You yeah. Know, they're, they're physical. You know, they're, you know Julio, A.J., those guys are, are real physical. You know, Rock, you know, seems like he wants to get hand. He's a lot more comfortable, you know, having hands on people. Um, maybe, maybe that's more of his matchup. I don't think AJ Brown or Julio is anybody's <laughs> matchup. Uh, but you know, you know, maybe it looks better next week. Maybe you get some more PBUs, maybe a pick or two. So I will say something that we've noticed just watching these clips here, because I think we've had like four or five that's really shown him in coverage mm-hmm. these last two weeks, is he is using his hands a lot more uh, at the line of scrimmage. Uh, which I, you know, again, I still think he's a little off balance yep. when he's using them. 
Uh, but for the most part, he is still using his he's using his hands a lot more in coverage, something we've been begging for him to do uh, since he got to the Colts. Yeah. So uh, I like the the newfound aggression. His run defense has been probably one of the best on the team just because the whole team is struggling in run defense right now. Uh, and I, I think he's made a lot of good positive plays. Just that one right there against a top receiver is just a it's a tough one that you can't you can't be off a little bit like that. Do you remember the reps uh, with him and Debo at the senior bowl? Yeah, man, that was a battle. Like they, they went at it. You know, Debo's a physical receiver. I mean, what does does he lead the NFL in receiving right now? Yeah, right now he does. Yeah, yeah. so like like watching them two go at it. You know, that's the type of corner I thought you know Rock would be. You know, in the NFL, like make him super aggressive, make him you know pull it back, pull it back some. And I don't know if something happened once he got into the league, but he seemed super aggressive um, during that time. And I wish he would keep that style because that I would I would much rather tell you to pull it back than tell you to go. Yeah, and I think yeah. that's what he probably has been struggling with the most. But he definitely has been getting hands on, especially the first couple of games we watched. Um, so I think he looks more comfortable there um, than anything else. But you know, we'll, we'll see going forward. Yeah, yeah. I mean, another great test this week, and then some some other good ones after that as well. But that's all we got here for this episode, guys. Uh, hopefully, again, it's more than six clips uh, in this next game, and hopefully, it's a lot of lot better clips. Uh, yeah, Hopefully, we Xavier picks, Rhodes. Man. We need some picks. We got. Yeah, we need, I like highlights. I will say there, there were there were two clips I didn't include that people are probably going to ask. One was the first touchdown to Cooper Cup, and and that one I just didn't feel like breaking down because um, it was just Kari falling down. It's yeah. not really anything we could break down from a technical standpoint. He just tripped over. I mean, he could have opened up a little earlier and not fallen <laughs> down, I guess. But uh, and the other one was Kari Wills that is interception in the second quarter. Uh, but it was just on an overthrown ball. I didn't. Yeah, you know. those are always weird. You know, you I won't, I like the ones where you know they you know have good footwork or they 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 had great anticipation, not not quarterback error. But you know, I, have you seen the Rock- Rockison's interception last year against Green Bay? I feel like I have. Okay. Because that one would be right up your alley. That one was the play, well, second best pick of the I, year last usually, year. Usually, so so in the past, you know, all the coach info I got was from you. I don't yeah. like <laughs> all of it. So, like, the you know, the last, you know, year or so, whatever, if it's Colts, like, I usually know a lot more about the Colts than I would normally know. <laughs> but I follow you, so I always click on, I click on your articles, click on your links. Um, You did a whole, was it a whole series on Rock? Yeah, uh, I did a couple yeah. things on Rock. I did, yeah. Um, yeah, I did one where it was like, oh man, I felt so clever with the title. It was like the dichotomy um, of man yeah. or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the dichotomy yeah, of play. I was like, ooh, I'm gonna use like this the yeah. swords word and just be. I'll no, throw in a it. Jekyll and Hyde reference in there. Like we'll be, we'll be like. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I love these. Yeah, I peep, yeah. I peep all, all the. Uh, that's why I got all my coats. Now I catch myself, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm diving in the, the, the coats board and peeping stuff week to week, and I'm looking at the injury report. And yeah, no, no, you don't want to talk about that, but no. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Thank well, we're gonna have, we have a whole season here to talk Colts. We're gonna do it every every Thursday here for you guys. We're recording this here on Wednesday night, but every Thursday uh, for you guys. And again, next week, hopefully. Some more positive clips. Rocky Sin locking up Julio Jones. We're going to be here for it. A couple yes, picks, sir. maybe two. Yes, we're going to be for it. Uh, yeah. But we will catch you guys next week here on Into the DB Film Room with Hicks and Hack. <laughs> Join us next week, guys.